Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Com, here with a 30 for 30 Lightroom head-to-head -head edition where I have Richie. Richie, what's going on? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. These videos are brought to you by the fine people over at Adobe. And if you are looking to follow along for this 30 for 30, go to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. You can also download all the DNG files that we will be editing so that you can try it out yourself. And if you don't have Lightroom yet, well, you can download a free trial right there on the site so you can play with all of the raw files for this 30 for 30. Richie, are you ready to get editing? Let's do this, man. Let's see what raw file we are working with this time. And we have, ooh, a barber chair. Or a chair where you could get your neck cut or your throat cut because it's Sweeney Todd. Though I've never actually seen Sweeney Todd. All right, let's do this. Wow, I think there is a ton you could do to this. I'm just gonna do my initial edit here. Oh, this could get freaky. What would black and white be? Mm, we could play with that later, but I'm loving the red. Look at that red that's coming up. I want to get that super saturated. I want this to be a punchy, punchy image. You see what the clarity slider did right there? It just went from, watch. It just went from eh, and it cut right through and went ba-boom. That looks really cool. And we haven't even gotten that far yet and we're almost there. Um, let's see where we are. Enable lens correction. See what lens correction is doing? See how it's straightening this out along the edge? Watch, I'll do that again. On, and you can see that it, 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 it brightened up the outside. What it tends to do is get rid of that vignette of the lens. It does a correction for the specific lens that you're using. Now, I use this sometimes, and then other times, I actually like the natural vignette as a way to draw you in to the image. Because in this case, you see what it did? It brightened up around the outside, whereas Ah, wow, what lens was it? Because you can totally see what's happening. It's crazy. You can see how it straightened it out. And I have to decide, do I like the darkness of this because it's a dark image in the first place versus this? Wow, that makes a big difference. And you just sit here and you go toggle on and off, toggle on and off. I'm gonna go with, mm, for now I'm gonna go with lens correction on. Just gonna do that for time being. Dehaze. We know that if we go this way, not much good's gonna happen. If we go this way, wow, it's just crunchy. Watch this, I'm gonna go right here, then I'm gonna come back to my shadow slider. I'm gonna go like this just a little bit. Got it. I actually don't wanna go too far with the blacks this time. I'm gonna go the other way. Pull back that just a little bit. Contrast right there. And then, do I want this red to be punchy like it's blood? I can get rid of the red, or I could make it go like that, really saturated. So you have that option. You also have more options. Oh, I was still in linear. I didn't even make it, I could, I could make it even crunchier. Though I don't want to go that far. I can go medium. That looks really good. Up with the exposure just a little bit, like this. And then if you really, let's save this as a snapshot. I'm gonna go over here. Gonna hit the snapshot button. Gonna go ahead and just do that and give that a one. Oh, by the way, I see there's other presets that, that uh, Lightroom already gives you. You could make a blue filter, not so much. I'm gonna control Z that or command Z that. Let me just tell you about these filters really quick, uh, the presets on the left-hand side. It's nice that Lightroom gives you presets, but uh, what I wanna remind you is that you can't just click a button and call it a day with your image. The presets are meant to give you a place to start so that you can tweak any direction that you wanna go after the fact. It's, it's something that's good that you can create on your own, but just know not every image is gonna fit that preset. Uh, and that's why I think if you create them yourself, you're formulating your style and not using somebody else's style if you buy somebody else's presets. All right, I have that. Black and white, what's that looking like? Well, I'm gonna do a separate edit for black and white. Um, here's the color. You could also go ahead and do a crappie McCropperson. And, because we could just get the focus to be this chair. Yep, see that? I changed my composition. I don't like where the chair is here, but if I go like this, I'm giving it a little more breathing space from the bottom. I think that feels right. A lot of this is going based off of the feel. How does the image feel? Uh, 
and you'll know if something causes tension. If it causes tension when you look at it, maybe don't do it. Or in this case, the tension could be warranted because this is, you could see this as a darker image. So let's go ahead and do this one as a number two. And then I wanna go ahead and just do a quick black and white and just rock it through this to see what I would do. I could go like this, I could go like this. Let's get that lens correction off this time just to go the opposite direction, goodbye. Let's see, my dehaze. We could probably still mess with the colors and that's gonna change your black and white. You see that? Look at that. You see that even when you change your, uh, the, the, the colors during black and white, you can still see what's happening. Yes. This is really awesome. You're just tweaking it. There's no purple in this image, that won't help, but we know there's a little bit of this. Boom. Got my contrast all the way up. Let's pull the highlights. Nope, I'm gonna leave the highlights right where they are. Pull back on my exposure and make it a little darker. Let me look at it full screen, gonna hit the F button. There's my black and white. It's a little darker than I normally like, but this is a dark image, it's meant to be dark. Get rid of that, back, I hit the F again, and I think that is where I'm gonna leave this edit. I'm curious to see which way Richie goes. I've got three different edits here. Let's see how Richie is doing. All right, here we go, Let's see what we're working with. Oh, sick, Eastern State. I've been in that little cubby many a times. We actually did the tourism campaign photos for them a couple years ago and spent a night overnight shooting terror behind the walls. It was so scary. The barbershop chair, it's such a cool room. I hope it's Eastern State, if not, I feel like a dummy. All right, we're gonna dig into exposure right off the bat and play with that. Crunch it up a little bit. I like this moody. I, I want it to feel like it's, you know, the, the 40s or the 30s or even the 20s and Capone was in there getting his hair cut. So we're gonna open the shadows up just a bit, but we're gonna crunch them back down. One thing I always do is I open the shadows and I use clarity to kind of crunch it right back down because it really is just adds a nice little effect into your midtones. We're gonna bring the vibrance down. We wanna make this really creepy looking. I'm going to play with the dehaze tool too on going negative values. See if we can add like a little bit of atmosphere to it. I think that might look kind of cool. Let's pump those whites up. I want that, that window, that top window blown to smithereens. And there you go, no detail. So you can really see where the light's coming from. Not too bright where it, it distracts you, but just to the tip. Now, one thing I definitely am going to do is I'm going to do an inverted mask on the chair so that I can make the chair a little bit brighter. We're gonna reset everything. Now, one cool thing is if you double click the tool, so say exposure, if you double click the word exposure, it resets that part of the tool so you don't have to go back and drag stuff back and forth. It just automatically sets it to zero. So we're gonna open that up a little bit in the exposure and definitely in the shadows. That looks pretty good to me. So there you go. Cool. Now let's take a look against our original here. Oh, I like that. I like where that's going. So let's go back to develop module and D get you back into there. I'm gonna pull saturation back, black back a little bit. I want it like a muted, like that maroon. I want it to be kind of cold and mysterious looking. I'm gonna get down to the haze. Not a tool I use very often, but I'm kind of curious if it'll give me the effect I'm looking for that's not too po posterized looking. That's actually kind of cool. Kind of gives it like this grimy look to it, but it's not doing it over where I want it to. So we're gonna go ahead and see if, it, we're gonna take a snapshot. And we're gonna call it before haze adjustment. And we're gonna go back up. We're gonna reset this, get rid of it. And we're gonna go ahead and throw the haze in before we do the chair. Let's go right to there. Gives it this really cool milky look that we're gonna try to crunch back down in the midtones and the shadows. So we're gonna pull our shadows back just a little bit. Crunch it up a little more. And we're gonna pull our blacks back a little bit. So that's starting to look really cool and a signature vignette, of course, because I like drawing the eye in. Now, we're not going 70s wedding photographer here. We have those burned in corners. 
We're just going to throw a little bit in just to give you just a little bit of leading light to there. I'm going to take a look at it. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Now I'm going to crop it a little bit. It's got a little bit too much negative space on the bottom there for me. So we press R tool, goes into the crop. We're going to drop the ceiling down so it's just the window. And you know what? We're actually going to go ahead and just do something completely crazy. We're going to crop it the way I would have shot it. Horizontal. I'm not a big wide shooter. I'm more of a tight fill the frame shooter. I shoot very long lens and very compressed stuff. So my brain just automatically goes to that. And now it's a little bit bright since we brought it in so much and we're going to drop it down just a little bit. I think we're almost in a good place. I really just want to finesse that vignette a little bit more. So we're going to make sure we constrain crop so it doesn't actually just do it to the entire frame. It does it to the cropping area. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in a little bit. Get into a nice place now. There we go. You can see it. There we go. Let me go back to color. I'm in a nice place here, and I think this is getting pretty nice. We're going to go back to here and really just make that work. a little heavy on the vignette, backing that off just a hair. And now we're using the vignette in the lens correction as well. So you want to make sure you keep track of which ones you're using since they get hidden in tabs sometimes. So we're just going to open that back up a little bit, open our midpoint up. Check it one more time against our original. And last thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten it. So R and then you click the angle and you just draw the line like how you would you see it's straight, and the chair is nice and straight now. Cool. I like it. All right, so we've swapped files. It's now time to see our edits. Are we ready? Yeah, man. We're going to go on 34 this time. 34. On right. one, let's just go on two. And two. Here we go. <laughs> oh. 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 How many did you do? One? Yeah. And I did three. Oh, so you did the same thing I did. Uh, what, the, the vertical crop? Yeah. It's very yeah. similar. See, when I saw that, I feel like we were like 20. Back at Eastern State. Eastern State Penitentiary. It is Eastern State, right? Well, I, I don't know if it is Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, it just says barber chair. I don't know, maybe. So tell me about your edits. Why so muted? I wanted to give it that creepy allure, but not black and white that like, you know, there's still weird tones in it. You still have a little bit of tone in the rocks and you still have a little bit of tone in the chair, but it's not, you know, your eye goes straight to the chair and it doesn't really wander too much unless you go up to the window. Right. Oh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know I like to boomify things. Yeah. I just felt crunchy and ruby red. I mean, the chair, the way that the ruby red comes out yeah, looks cool. awesome. And then, of course, I just decided to go black and white because why not try to go black and white? I, I mean, I like it in black and white. Yeah, I think, I think the, I like the black and white. I'm going to just go out on a limb here. I say I like my edits better. I, I could see that. Yours are a little rich for me. <laughs> No pun intended, Rich. <laughs> um, there, it, the, the color is too rich. I almost wanted to go more desaturated on mine. Really? Right? Except for the chair. Well, and, and I, can, I can see what you did, and I like it because, you know, it's almost ghosting away. Right. Kind of giving you the feel like, wait, is this chair even here? Or is this like a ghosting, a ghostly showing of the chair? You know what I tried? What'd you try? I painted some dehaze in, negative dehaze. Oh, you went the other so way. Instead, you know, correcting for it, tried to add it. So I put a little bit on the chair just to, to give you that like atmosphere from the top window coming down. Ah, uh, atmosphere. a little bit, but not. Well, that, that's the fun things about these edits. And when I say that I like mine better, it doesn't mean that I think I'm better than Richie at this. <laughs> no, it's, you guys let us know, what do you think? Whose edits do you like? Do you like mine? Do you like Richie's? Do you like a little bit of both? Because this is a friendly, I like to do competitions. It's a, it's a pretty friendly competition, but it's also a great way to learn. And that's why we give you the DNG files so you can do whatever you want with it. Edit any way you want, whether it's desaturated, whether it's totally boomified or anywhere else in between, you can get that file over at fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. You can also download a free trial of Lightroom if you don't have it yet so that you can open up the DNG and edit it for yourself. And that is where we will leave it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.